I'm here with the Canyon in-flight CF SLX of Mathieu van der Poel, a rider who has, let's face it, won more cyclocross races than I've had hot meals. He's hot property right now in cyclocross, and well, many teams out there are actually hoping that he would go and ride for them on the road. But no, his sights, I believe, are firmly set on the Tokyo 2020 Olympic mountain bike race, believe it or not. Anyway, enough about that. Let's take a look at this bike of his. Well, first of all, you can see it's decked out in a pretty special silver, matte black, and also a couple of different shades of blue and some yellow stars down on there. But what does all this mean then? This means he's European champion. Therefore, he's got himself a special edition bike. Now, uh, Van der Poel himself, he actually stands at 1 meter 84 tall, which is just over six foot in old money. So he uses a medium sized frame. Now, if we look closely at it, you will in fact see he's got a bottle cage fitted onto the seat tube here, which is slightly unusual in cyclocross, but if weather permits it, you are actually allowed to have a bottle on the bike for the race, which is super cool in my opinion. And some aerodynamic tests have actually shown that a bottle on the seat tube is more aerodynamic than on the down tube. Aerodynamics, not quite so critical in cyclocross, of course. So what have we got fitted then on the bike? Well, first up, we've got a Canyon S13 seat post, which is in the 27.2 millimeter diameter. So it's not gonna give you a really, really harsh ride like you would get with a 31.6 millimeter seat post, which tends to come in some frames out there, but we don't see it that often in cyclocross, hence the use of this one. Fitted onto the top of that is a Celia Talia Team Edition saddle. Uh, then also we've got the Canyon H11 cockpit here, which comes with a 110 millimeter stem, and the bars themselves are 41 centimeters wide from where you measure at the shifters. And what shifters we've we got fitted? Well, we've got Shimano Jura Ace Di2, and that's the 9170 models, because of course, this is a hydraulic disc brake bike. And then wrapping the integrated handlebars and stem, we've got a slightly cushioned effect Celia Talia handlebar tape. Now, tire choice, I don't know exactly what they are. They are 33 millimeters wide, which is pretty much standard in cyclocross because that's the UCI legal limit in width. However, what brand? I'm gonna put my neck out and say they're Dugast. They are unbranded. And the reason behind this is that many riders and teams actually choose not to have a tyre sponsor so that they can actually really purposefully choose or select different models and brands for specific events because tyre choice is absolutely critical in cyclocross. As for pressure, say that that is about 23 to 25 PSI, something like that. I have spent quite a bit of time helping out mechanics on cyclocross races, so this thumb is pretty good gauge. What about the drivetrain then? Well, we've got Shimano Durace 9170 derailleurs, both front and rear. Now, here's something for you. These rear derailleurs, the 9170, because of the shadow style design, there's actually more tension in that from the previous model, the 9070 or 9000 series Durace. So it does in fact help the chain stay on a little bit better when you're riding over the rough stuff. That's paired up with an 11 to 28 cassette from Shimano, the Durace model here on the rear wheel. Chainring size, well, we've actually got 4639 and it's a two by setup. Shimano, of course, not making a specific one by setup for cyclocross just yet, or who knows if they are in fact in the future. I'm just merely speculating. So we've got that paired up with a chain which doesn't have very much lubricant on there whatsoever. Because obviously you don't want to start attracting sand and dirt into the chain whilst riding over the period of an hour. Crank length. 172.5 millimeters, which is pretty much spot on because I'm the same height as Matthew. So at least I'm doing something he does correctly. Pedals, again, unbranded. They have got Proto 00 written on them. So they do look very much like Shimano model, XTR for instance, but very much slimmed down. What about the weight of the bike then? Well, it comes in at 7.51 kilos. What about some finishing touches then on a bike? Because admittedly, a cyclocross bike, they're not quite as decked out as a road bike. They don't have the opportunity to do special things with bottle cages. Although, like I've previously said, there is one fitted on here. Nothing special about that one though, but it is a finishing touch nonetheless. But DI2 cable here on the rear derailleur, it is in fact zip tied in place because of course, it's very unlikely, but a rider, they wouldn't want to have that snag on something like a twig or a branch, anything like that, and pop out, preventing any gear changes. And then moving forward to the cranks, this is something I've never seen a pro rider do. They've actually got scuff guards on the cranks there to protect them from any heel rub. 
something like that, which is super cool. Shows he actually really does care for his equipment. Speaking of that scuff guard, there's also one on the head tube too, just covering up the Canyon logos there. Well, not covering it up exactly, but more like protecting it. And then the pro's favorite, some heat shrink on the cables there at the front. So the DI2 cable, as well as the brake cable, are both, or brake hose rather in this case, are actually integrated nicely, keeping them out of harm's way. From the top of the saddle to the center of the cranks, that's 79.5 centimeters, which is pretty much spot on for me. And the reach is pretty long actually for a cyclocross bike, I reckon. Tip of the saddle to the center of the bars is 60 centimeters. So that's a little bit too long for me, so I can give this one back to Matthew. Don't worry about that one. And the drop from the saddle to the stem is 11 centimetres. So again, it's pretty much slammed there. If you look at Matthew when he rides, he does look really aerodynamic and aggressive. Right, and the moment you've all been waiting for, the free hub sound check. So let's have a listen. Sounds good to me, even over the commentator in the background. Now, I do hope you've enjoyed this look at the Canyon Inflight CFS LX of Matthew van der Poel. I've certainly enjoyed looking at it and I'm gutted to be giving it back, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, remember to like and share this with your friends too. Share it with a friend of yours who absolutely loves cyclocross. And if someone doesn't, share it with them anyway so they can enjoy it. Remember as well to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we have a whole heap of goodies for you to check out, including beanies certainly helped keep me warm today because it's absolutely freezing here. Now, also, why not check out another video? This time, click just over here for one, and I'm gonna take this one for a quick spin. See you later.